Welcome to beautiful Sydney, Australia, a city that sits in a class of its own, if its roads were not overflowing with cars, that is. In fact, as many as 50,000 new cars are added to the city's roads every year, and there are no signs that the trend is about to change. So far, existing operational metro services have not contributed all that much to reducing traffic issues in Sydney, but that's all about to change. A colossal new transport project is on the way. Sydney is building one of the largest suburban rail projects in the world, a $64 billion behemoth designed to completely transform the city's transport system. But with 113 kilometers of new metro lines to be added, 46 new stations and driverless trains on top of that, has Sydney bitten off more than it can chew with this mega project? I like traveling and geography, so as usual, allow me to first mingle about one of my favorite mega cities in the world, Sydney, or as some like to call it, Harbour City. Sydney is the capital of the state of New South Wales. It is quite huge with a total land area of more than 12,000 square kilometers. It is also the most populous city in Australia, with about a quarter of the entire country's population. It is full of tourist destinations and a heck of fun to visit. One thing you might dislike about the city is traffic congestion during rush hour and the insane number of cars found on its roads at any given moment. The number is usually around 320,000 cars, which, needless to say, is quite high. This is one of the reasons why the government invested billions and is currently investing more to expand its rather new metro. Sadly, for many Sydney residents, a daily commute is just bad, and it is a nightmare for people living or working in the busiest areas and suburbs. To solve this problem and reduce the city's CO2 footprint, the new South Wales government is implementing the Sydney Metro program, which is the biggest public transport project in Australia and is bound to cost upward of $65 billion. These futuristic metro lines will be fully automated, the first in Australia, and increase Sydney's rail capacity by up to 60% by the end of 2026 and much more by 2030. Let's now take a look at the rather complex Sydney metro plans. But first, let's check out the amazing monstrous machines used to build it below the massive bustling city. According to Sydney Metro, which is an agency owned by the state government, by 2030, Sydney Metro lines will be 114 kilometers long with 46 stations. This colossal massive mega project meant one thing, powerful, insane machines. This massive project called on engineers to summon the notoriously amazing and complex mechanical monsters tunnel boring machines, or TBMs, that act like giant earthworms and can chew even through the hardest rocks deep below the surface. Giant shafts are excavated for the various parts of a TBM to be lowered into the proper position below the ground at the specified depth. As the parts are lowered into place via giant cranes, sophisticated tools and equipment are used for assembly. Once assembled, a TBM looks like a giant earthworm, but with a cutting head that can grind through rocks and soil. As it grinds away, the debris and soil are collected by the machine itself and sent via conveyor belts to the surface, where it can be used to make concrete rings for the tunnel's walls. The concrete ring segments are then shipped back to the TBM. A section of the TBM places these segments in place, thus forming a concrete tube representing the future tunnel. As many as 16 TBMs would be used in the construction of Sydney Metro. Depending on the area, these TBMs will operate between 30 and 60 meters below the city, thus far from the foundations of buildings and the city's underground infrastructure. Some of these TBMs can be up to 120 meters long and weigh as much as 1,100 tons. The main body of a TBM is made of a cutting head, tunnel field, and trailing gear. Different cutting heads are used depending on the geology. 
For example, the hard rock. TBM is used to excavate rocks up to six times stronger than concrete with the help of disc cutters, which are mounted on the cutter head. This type of TBM can grind through rocks its own length per week. On the other hand, soft ground TBMs are used when the soil is soft. For example, slurry shield TBMs are used when the ground conditions are granular with very high water pressure, such as below the Sydney Harbour. In 2019, the first TBM broke through the new massive Victoria Cross Station Cavern, which is 265 meters long, 25 meters wide, and 20 meters high, and is 31 meters below the surface of the heart of the North Sydney Business District thus connecting the giant station to the first and currently operational Sydney Metro Northwest line. Okay, let's now break down the mess so that it makes more sense, especially for those who are not from Sydney or Australia altogether. The infrastructure of Sydney Metro is a complex and multidisciplinary engineering system involving earthworks, tunnels, steelwork, and a track system to form the base upon which the railway runs. Let's start with the operational $8.3 billion Sydney Metro Northwest Line. Sydney Metro Northwest, formerly the Northwest Rail Link, is the first stage of Sydney Metro that became operational in 2019. It features 36 kilometers of track between Chatswood and Rouse Hill, single-deck trains with about 50% more hourly capacity than double-deck carriages, 15 kilometers of tunnels, 13 stops including 8 new stations, 4,000 commuter parking spaces, a train stabling facility, a 4-kilometer SkyTrain viaduct, and 4 kilometers of bridges. The next metro line, which is almost complete, is the $21 billion Sydney Metro City and Southwest, this line extends metro services from where Sydney Metro Northwest ends in Chatswood to Bankstown in southwest Sydney. It features 17 kilometers of twin tunnel and seven new stations. As for the works for Sydenham to Bankstown, it comprises upgrade of 13 kilometers of rail line, conversion of 11 stations between Sydenham and Bankstown, upgrading 15 bridges, the next line is the $25.3 billion Sydney Metro West, which should be ready by 2030. It will deliver approximately 24 kilometers of underground metro railway connecting Parramatta to Sydney Central Business District. This line will work together with the existing T1 Western Rail Line between the Sydney Central Business District and Parramatta. It will involve nine new stations and upgrades to existing stations. A new metro station in Hunter Street will be constructed as one of nine new stations for Sydney Metro West. As for the Sydney Olympic Park Metro Station, it would be located south of the existing Olympic Park Station. The tunneling will comprise two components, tunneling west from Westmead to the Bays Precinct and tunneling east from the Bays Precinct to Sydney Central Business District. Works will include hard rock tunnel boring machines for the construction of 11 kilometers of twin tunnels between Sydney Olympic Park and the future station in the Bays Precinct. Over 70,000 concrete segments will be used to line the twin tunnels and two access shafts at Burwood North and the Bays. The next Sydney Metro line is the $11 billion Western Sydney Airport line, which should be operational by the end of 2026. It comprises a new Metro line run from St. Mary's Station on the existing T1 heavy rail line to the Western Sydney Aerotropolis near Bringley via Western Sydney Airport. It will involve the construction of two sections of twin tunnels between St. Mary's and Orchard Hills stations and between the Western Sydney Airport Terminal and Aerotropolis stations. The tunnels have a total combined length of 9.8 kilometers and include associated portal dive structures. Works will also comprise 3.5 kilometers of elevated viaduct between Orchard Hills and Luddenham. 6.7 kilometers of earthworks, a 190-meter bridge over the new M12 motorway, a 20-meter bridge within the airport, temporary and permanent access routes. 
Are you from Sydney, Australia? Did we miss something? Please let us know your thoughts. Thank you for watching and please like, share, subscribe and hit the bell icon.